blockchain, we build everything in smart contracts, and so we have transparency, and the second thing is we uh, basically change the power model. In a, in a classical insurance uh, business, you have the power concentrated in the insurance company. In a blockchain model, the power of, on the payouts is delegated by the insurance company to the smart contract, which acts as an objective source of truth. So if there is a claim, then the, the payout is calculated on an objective base and not on the will of the insurance company. So this is uh, the two elements, transparency and the delegation of power to a smart contract, which makes it very fair and uh, very foreseeable for all participants. Of course, we need good data for this, because the terms models which we are proposing first are based on data, on public data. For example, our first uh, product, which is flight delay, uh, insurance for flight delays. There we have public accessible data on the uh, flights, business flights all over the world. There are companies, several companies, which collect this data. They have uh, an obligation to collect this data by the state because the, uh, the uh, flight business is highly regulated and the governments. Uh, they they uh, demand the airlines to publish this data on uh, the accuracy of uh, arrivals and so on. So we have very good data source. And as you all know, uh, the data on the, uh, which is available publicly is growing from day to day. I have a, um, a study which says that 90% of all data which is existing currently in the internet has been generated in the last two years. So the amount of data which is available worldwide is, uh, is increasing by day by day and we can use this for insurance and we can use this for insurance products. For example, weather data is uh, nowadays available in very high granularity and we can build a lot of insurance products which are based on weather data. I will come to this uh, later. So it's fair, probably fair, it's transparent, it's automated, so the costs are cut down because we have no manual interference. The whole process is done on the blockchain, it's automatic, and nobody has to do anything. It's pollution resistant because nobody can interfere with a smart contract. The smart contract is basically immutable. I will say some words to this afterwards. Um, can change it, but uh, you can change it only according to some rules. And if you change it, it becomes very public and it becomes transparent that you change it. Then we can have tokens which can enable new types of business. You can uh, collaborate on products, which is possible if you have a token. So token enable a collaborative product development, a collaborative product production. So we open up the whole insurance business for small players. So small teams can build their insurance products and we can help them to bring these uh, products to the public and to sell them this fruit. And so we can cover the whole value chain of insurance with smart contracts. <coughs> so currently we have this problem. Another problem of insurance is that the entry barriers for small teams are very high. And uh, teams which have product ideas, they are talking to insurance companies and they are basically, um, uh, they, they, they need an insurance company which provides a legal framework, license, capital, and so on. And we ourselves have uh, made the experience that talking to insurance companies is very hard because they have little incentive to, uh, to deploy products which they didn't themselves. Uh, the best you can have is that they buy your idea and they, they produce it on their own, uh, but it's very difficult to, to incentivize them that they, uh, that they, they bring, uh, give you a legal framework for your product. So we want to change this, this barrier to break it up 
and build a framework where these small teams can build these products and can have a little framework, capital, access to the market, and uh, I will show you how this works. The basic idea is we have um, basically two layers. We have a technical layer and we have the legal and capital layer. The technical layer is the first one. So the technical layer is based on smart contracts. We have a whole suite of uh, smart contracts which cover the whole process of insurance. From distribution, application, underwriting, maintaining a contract, claims management, and uh, even if you finish a contract that's all covered by a smart contract. Uh, it's not one smart contract, it's a whole suite of smart contracts. We are now about 15 smart contracts which interact with each other. And these, uh, these yellow ones, they are working on a technical framework which we have developed, which uh, brings uh, some basic technical infrastructure like upgradability of smart contracts, database, access control, business process logic, and this is uh, separated in modules, so it's reusable. And on top of this basic technical framework, we have 15 smart contracts, which basically cover the whole business process of insurance. But this platform, this yellow and orange platform, this is generic. It does not know anything about specific products. It's just a pure, bare-bone insurance process. And it uh, takes care that there are policies, that there are risks, and risks are tracked separately from policies because risks can accumulate. For example, in a flight insurance, if uh, 100 people are sitting in the same plane, that's a huge risk for us because if this plane is delayed, then we have 100 payouts at once. So we need to count all these risks, and we have to separate the risks from the policy. If the same 100 policies are distributed about 100 different flights, the risk for us is very low because maybe two or three of these planes will be late, but not all of them. And so we need to, to separate risk from policies. This is done in this layer. And of course, we, we have customers, we have payments. This is also part of this uh, generic layer. And then on top of this, we have products with specific features. So basically, every team builds a small smart contract which only encapsulates all the product specifics of this product. They don't need to care about the whole process because that's done by the generic platform. They only have to care, take care on their specifics, uh, for example, the weather insurance or a different type of um, parametric insurance that is covered in the green rectangles. These are all smart contracts, but they are only small and very lean smart contracts. And they, they get their data from oracles. You can use different type of oracles. For example, flight delay is based on the Oracleize Oracle framework. You can use different oracles, like uh, we are currently talking to Wolfram Alpha. Wolfram Alpha is a big computer a computing platform, very famous. And they have tons of data, which is available. And we are currently working together with Consensus. They have a project together with Wolfram Alpha. And Colleagues of Michael are working on an API which we can use to connect all these data sources which are with our insurance uh, platform. And so basically, it's up to you to build a, a statistical model, you connect the Oracle with our generic platform, and then you are done and you have an insurance product. So, this is uh, how it uh, will look like. Teams around the world will say products, we provide the platform, the technical platform. And of course, we have also uh, some components outside the blockchain. For example, we have a monitoring uh, infrastructure. So you can see how many policies you have, uh, the status of your policies, the accumulated risk, and so on. So we, it's very comfortable to, to work with this platform because you have, like a looking glass, you can look in the blockchain and you don't only see the transactions, but you can see also all the data in the transactions. And you see it in a way which is uh, very nice to uh, to monitor. So this is the plugin structure. So basically, the team can come to us, can register a product on our generic platform, then they can start. So the protocol, the technical stack is like this. Uh, we have uh, 
serial, the EPM, we had some language like Solidity or smart contracts are written in Solidity, but you can also use other uh, languages. Then you have uh, community best practices like SafeMath and uh, libraries, you have tokens, RC20, whatever. This is all very common and it's very technical and it's very agnostic to the business which is running on top of it. And then we start with the green layers. Green layers are also still very generic, like business process engine, which enables you to formulate certain flows, workflows, Smartphones are also uh, encapsulated in smart contracts. So, does not know anything about financials. Then, the next layer, the light green, is atomic financial processes like payments and uh, assets data, identity, all this type of stuff like Uport. Also, Civic, there are many projects working on identity. We can use this. Governance like Aragon and others. Uh, this is a light green layer. And then on top of this, we build the insurance layer. So we start already on a very high level. We are not building everything from scratch, but we use all the other projects and integrate them in our platform. So we don't have a, a governance layer, but we use Aragon. Uh, we don't have an identity layer, we use Uport or others. So uh, we are only focusing on the pure bare bone insurance process. And then, of course, teams can also build their own proprietary extension on top of it. So if they want to keep their product knowledge uh, secret, then they can do so, if they like. We, of course, build our own products, uh, which are open, but teams can decide if they want to do it open or if they want to stay in closed source. And now the interesting thing, that's not technical, but the interesting thing, we have also a solution for the legal and regulatory and the capital side. So this is the work of last year. Basically, 90% uh, of our energy went in this uh, layer, in the legal framework layer, because that's a hard thing, uh, that's a heavy lifting. Basically, it's very easy to build smart contracts. If there are experts, we have very good developers, but the uh, regulatory framework is really hard. Uh, because uh, we talked to, I think, about 70 insurance companies which should help us to build such a framework. They were all very interested, but they are all very reluctant. And in the end, they all said, okay, nice idea, it's still immature, we will watch it and go ahead. And if you, are, if you have something, we are very uh, happy to look at it and maybe use it. So uh, we, we were looking around for um, some uh, solution for this and in September last year we met a guy from uh, not an insurance company but from a, one of the large brokers. And the large brokers like um, Aon and Marsh and others, uh, Lloyd of London, these big brokers say they have a good overview on the whole market. They know uh, all the countries and they know all the special models. And this guy from Aon, he's on our advisory board, so I can say his name, it's Tobias Nord. And Tobias basically, uh, he met us and after two days he said, hey, if you look at Malta, Malta has, uh, has a solution for you. And uh, on Malta, we have here, this is Malta, right? And on Malta, we have a special legal entity. This legal entity is called a so-called protected cell company. And it's not made for blockchain, but it fits very nicely to blockchain. Why is it? Protected cell company is basically a structure where you have a corn, like a flower, a sunflower, you have a center, and then you have many leaves in the outside. And all these leaves are independent, they are so-called cells, and each cell is basically an independent insurance company, but it does not need all the regulatory <coughs> capital and requirements because uh, that is all bundled in the core, in the center. So you need to do it only once, and then you have it for all the leaves are in the outside. So you can have one core and 20, 50 cells in the outside. And that's what's uh, very appealing. 
for us. And so we, we said that's the right model. We need some structure where we can provide a platform, like a technical platform. And then teams can build their own cell with very little effort and very little capital. Basically, if you want to start an insurance company in Germany, then you need uh, 10 million euros. If you want to start a cell on Malta, you need 400k. That's a the relation. And so 400k is still not uh, small money, but uh, I think it's much easier to raise 400k uh, uh, to start an insurance product if you have a good idea than to raise a 10 million. I think in Germany in the last year there have been two or three new insurance companies uh, which uh, are funded uh, because the requirements are so high. And we would expect that 10 or 20 projects start their own insurance products uh, on our platform with uh, such a lower requirement. That's what we are targeting. And we have also a solution for reinsurance, because most insurance companies need uh, reinsurance for covering the so-called accumulated risk. If some catastrophe happens, then the insurance company alone won't be able to pay off all the claims. So we kind of normally we have reinsurance, and reinsurance is also difficult to obtain, but Malta is also a solution for this. We can uh, have a, basically a similar model for collecting capital for reinsurance purposes. So if you have a product, then you can go on the market, you can collect risk money in this uh, right structure here, it's a so-called securitization selling company. And uh, you can also collect small amounts of money and build returns for your product. The whole thing has to be driven by some company, of course. We are starting with a foundation, like the foundation at the top. And this foundation will collect uh, funds. These funds will fund the core structure via a holding, because probably we need several of these structures in different jurisdictions. We have one in Malta. Maybe uh, next one will be on the Bahamas, which has a similar model. And there are several countries which offer these uh, protected cell structure. And so we need a holding with the Caesaris International AG. And this holding will uh, basically build, build the, the, the umbrella for all these companies which we need <coughs> to provide this service. So what we are doing is could say we build insurance as a service on blockchain so teams can build an insurance product with no, no capital and no time. So the question, what does the SCC stand for? SCC is theorized. The SCC is, uh, means uh, securitization cell company and the PCC is protected cell company. So this is the two, uh, two words. Okay, how do we earn money? Or how do you earn money on this platform? So basically, you could say uh, the generic platform is an open platform. It should not earn too much money because uh, the profit should be in the cells. Uh, the teams build their projects. But of course, the, the platform itself needs some fuel to run. So uh, we're starting here with the insurance. If the insurance will pay of this premium and part of the premium will be some fee and the fee will finance the platform and will also finance all the uh, participants which provide the services, the oracles, the data and uh, the products. So we have uh, a certain uh, part of the fees which are uh, going to our so-called sovereign workers. Sovereign worker is somebody who provides a service in this, uh, in this uh, value chain. It can be a team, it can be a single one, it can be a mathematician, it can be an actuary, it can be a data scientist, or it can be a whole team which provides a whole model uh, which is uh, deployed on this platform. So all these people get paid by the premium and a certain part of the premium is used for paying all these people. Then, on the other side, the rest of the premium goes in the risk pool, and the risk pool is also maintained by us, and uh, so we can ensure that all regulations are fulfilled, all 
requirements are fulfilled. And uh, part of this risk pool can also be used as a premium for reinsurance. And on reinsurance, probably in the next years, we will use the uh, existing reinsurance system. On the long run, we want to try to establish our own reinsurance system, which is based on these um, tokenized risks. So basically, you can think we collect money, we sell tokens, and all the money which is collected for the tokens goes in a pool, and if a catastrophe happens, then the pool is used to cover the, ex the excessive losses. If no catastrophe happens, uh, then the investors get paid and earn some interest rate on their uh, invested money. So this is a common model, it's called an insurance linked security. We have this already, but only in large scale. We try to build this on a much smaller scale to make democratic and more accessible to all small investors. So this half of the side of this slide is still only a vision. We think that we can build this if we are successful with the left side. So first of all, the left side, the simple bare-bone insurance process uh, with sovereign workers which build their own products which are get paid by fees. And uh, of course, a small part of the fees will also be used to uh, further develop the open source platform. First product, Light Delay, it's online uh, for two weeks now, and uh, now we have no restrictions. We had it online last year for the uh, DEF CON, and everybody who went to DEF CON could buy a ticket. Uh, it was restricted to Cancun. Now we have it online again, no restrictions, you can insure any flight worldwide. Just go on our page fdd.ingress.com, they can buy the policy uh, for as little as $1, $2, or up to uh, $25. And uh, the payout is up to $1,500 in case your flight is delayed. And so it's, I think it's an attractive product. We are currently, uh, we don't have um, professional distribution, so basically uh, I'm the only marketeer for this product now. And of course we have the homepage. Uh, the next step will be that we uh, acquire a marketing partner for this, so we can bring it on another scale. And then you probably will, won't buy it on our homepage, but you will buy it in the ticket process. If you buy a flight ticket, then you can buy this type of insurance right to the uh, purchase of a flight ticket. Second uh, product which we are developing is still in development. I think it's also a very interesting product. It's a durable crypto wallet. Uh, so if you had, for example, uh, MetaMask or if you have JAX or some other type of uh, cryptocurrency wallet, then uh, you are on your own risk. If something happens, you lose your keys, uh, or something, uh, if there is a problem in the smart contract, then you lose your money. And we think that's uh, a blocker for the mass adoption of cryptocurrency. Because people who are not uh, technically oriented, they have <coughs> much uh, difficulties to use such, uh, such um, tools where they need technical knowledge to uh, keep your money safe. So what we need is uh, a type of wallet which is very easy to use on one side and on the other side is insurable. So if anything goes wrong, you get a refund for your money. If you have a bank account, you are used to it. If, the bank, if there is any problem with the bank, your money isn't lost, you get your money back. And we won't bring the same to crypto uh, world. But this is still a developing process. We need to develop a specification. We need a teams to implement such a wallet. And we need, uh, of course, uh, the insurance model behind it. And currently, uh, the main problem is that we don't find insurance companies which give us the coverage for this because of uh, many problems in the last months. We have heard about it, a parity wallet, and things like that. So insurers are very reluctant to give us reinsurance cover for this, but we're still working on it, and we hope that we can offer such a project in the 
uh, and of course, they have some common product in the pipeline. They have crop insurance. Uh, where we are working with uh, some um, uh, NGOs uh, on uh, Philippines and on Sri Lanka, and uh, also very promising. They are very interested, and uh, so we are. We hope that we can bring this product to the market also this year. Same for the hurricane insurance on the Puerto Rico. I understand correctly that you have to um, you have an insurance product that you need to make the client wall to be the client. What's the material? Sorry, please repeat. Uh, so for product two, you have the insurance product built. Yeah. You need someone to build a client wall to be the Exactly. Yeah, for the for the insurable wallet, we don't want to develop this ourselves. We only want to write the specification. So we we have a basically a piece of paper with 10 requirements and uh, we talk to insurance companies, three insurance companies, we build the insurance contract for this, and uh, we say every team which builds a wallet which fulfills all the 10 requirements can be insured. So that's the, that's the idea. And you be insured against uh, events of provable breaking, it's not just the loss. So if you either did something like this place to see, that's not the same type of event as somebody saying, yeah, well, basically, we want to, uh, the specification will be in a way that you say uh, the, the, the wallet has to be provable, unbreakable. So, uh, we have some ideas how we can do this. Uh, so, the wallet will be very easy, not, not a complicated multi but it's a very simple uh, technical uh, smart contract which you can improve or at least. Uh, somehow prove some properties uh, and uh, so we, we try to reduce the risk in this contract and uh, of course we will also provide a framework of operating rules for this wallet so people who want to be insured have to follow some uh, processes like uh, if you have a bank account and then the bank says you have to keep your PIN secret yeah, and our requirements will be happy if people have to follow this insurable property. Okay, so the products, cover insurance, hurricane insurance, these are all weather-based insurances, and weather-based insurance is a whole portfolio of possible insurance products. For example, you can also build uh, an insurance which covers losses of income because, uh, for example, you have uh, in Munich, where yeah, I come from, you have a beer garden, and uh, beer garden depends on good weather yeah, because people sit in the outside under the tree. And consuming large amounts of beer, and if it's raining, then they don't come to the beer garden. So we can build an insurance for loss of revenue if the weather is bad. So if you have, for example, ten rainy weekends per year, then you get a payout because then it's probably you have a very small income. And this is also weather based, and so we build we can build a whole portfolio. We can insure. The same thing for wind energy, for uh, solar energy, and all these type of uh, projects that depend on good weather can be insured by weather-based contracts. And so we, with this type of insurance, we have a whole portfolio of possible products. And of course, you are invited to bring new models. Uh, you can also insure uh, cars. Uh, there is also a project which has data in the car driving data and we can put products on this and so we are actively seeking teams which provide such products. Is it only PNC? Uh, it sounds like you're only doing PNC insurance, so I'm guessing you have to solve the currency. Yes. Currently we are focusing on on uh, uh, this uh how is it in I think it's just solvency to regulation PNC. especially in Germany because you guys don't uh, require the, the, the lady at the beginning, uh, mentioned life insurance. Why, why don't we do life insurance? Um, I will spend some words on this. Um, the, one of the largest problems with blockchain based insurance is the volatility of cryptocurrencies. Because if you sign an insurance contract about uh, $1,000, yeah, then you expect, in case of a loss, that you get $1,000. And not only number of dollars but the value of these dollars. Yeah? So you can replace your 
cow in place uh, has bro been broken. And in crypto, if you have an insurance contract, it is uh, denominated in ESA, and it's uh, about 100 ESA, then you don't know what you get. It can be much, it can be nothing, yeah, basically. So the volatility of cryptocurrency prevents cryptocurrency to be uh, directly used for the denomination of insurance policies. So we are talking to regulators and we are talking to uh, insurance guys how we can solve this and there is basically a very simple solution, just use stable coins. Stable coins are stable by definition, but the problem is uh, we don't have stable coins. We have some, uh, like Maker, Dai, we have Tisa, we have all types of uh, stable coins. But all of these stable coins are very immature and uh, they're becoming more, uh, yeah, more stable and they're becoming more reliable. But uh, currently, um, no regulator would uh, accept these type of stable coins uh, with such a short history. Yeah? So we need a history maybe of at least three or four years where these stable coins have proved to be stable, and then we can talk to regulators and get them how we want to use these type of stable coins. Yeah, I'm just trying to understand this model here. I think uh, you provide technology framework, yeah. and you provide legal framework, I guess, right? Uh, okay. For anybody who wants to comment on this model. This yeah. uh, so somebody can come, like me, come and write smart contracts and try to sell, create a new product. Okay. Myself, right? So, and you also have a funding model here where you are just poor and how you are trying to fund that, right? Uh, and you're also providing your own insurance, right? So, I'm trying to understand you, you provide all the framework and you use the framework at the same time, you're allowing yes. others to use it. So, yeah. how the conflict go? Yeah, no. Good question. Maybe I think you're stuck. Uh, I know it's kind of challenging, but for the sake of the live stream, could you try to summarize the questions of the... Okay, the question was, uh, it seems like we uh, have two sides. The first side is building a platform, and the second side is building products on this platform. And uh, how do we resolve potential conflicts with teams which want to build their products, and they are conflicting with our own products? For example, there could be a team which also builds a flight delay insurance, and now we have two flight delay insurance on the same platform, and there is a conflict. Uh, how we can resolve, resolve this? So basically, I would say um, we are building these products only to show that it's working, to invite people as showcases, as, um, as proof of concept, or even proof of product, but the, the main uh, focus is a platform and enabling others to build the product on the platform. So, if, for example, if you come and say, oh, this flight delay, it's an interesting product. I have an idea how we can distribute it. You are invited to come, we will give this product as a gift to you and we will help you to be successful with this product. We have no interest to, to develop flight delay. It's only a showcase. And if somebody has a good distribution idea, then he is very welcome. And we will have him to, to bring this to the um, power to bring this to the public. And so as soon as somebody jumps in and said, Oh, I want to develop this, and we had this already, for example, crop insurance. We had we didn't we get only an idea for crop insurance. And then the guy came and said, I have connections, I know some people in the Philippines, I know some people in uh, Sri Lanka, I have some connections to the NGOs, let me do this. He said, okay, go, jump, we, 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 will, we will fund you, we will pay you, uh, and we will help you to bring this product to the market. So this is our way of working, yeah? and we are only, only building this platform here. Yeah. Yeah. So, that's I have two questions, way. actually. First is, can you explain who provides the initial funding for the risk pool? Because I guess you say on the chart that it's funded yeah. by Premier, but uh, I guess you need the minimum volume of the pool in order to be able to get insured and to provide for the claims. And maybe, second question is, can you maybe explain how the claim process works? Because claims are not like black and white, yeah. and smart contracts can be like a black and white. Okay. So, 
I repeat the question. The first question, where do we get the initial funding? Second question, uh, how does the claims process work? Um, first of all, the, to the funding. Uh, the funding is here, the initial funding. It's done by a token generating event, which is happening right now. Uh, we are starting end of June, and we try to collect the, 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 the first funding for the risk pool. Yeah? And it, it's only uh, a starting funding. And we will collect more money in the future, but uh, we will we want to collect now in the TGE, we want to collect the initial funding for setting up the risk pool, the company, and all the stuff which we need. So this is the, the answer on the first question. The second question, uh, the claims management. We try to make it black, as, as black and white as possible. Yeah. So, uh, for example, we use a data source for flight delay. The data source is objective and it's, in this case, it's black and white. Yeah. So, we get the data, data says the flight is uh, 35 minutes delayed, so we trigger payment. There's no discussion. Yeah. Of course, if you go to other products like the car insurance, yeah, then you need to assess the damage. There is a there is a damage at the car, and um, what's the how, what, what's the amount of loss which is in this damage? Yeah? And so we need experts. Uh, but experts are, for example, in Germany, the experts are certified. So I can engage any expert. He is certified, and he has the obligation to make a precise assessment of this damage. So I can give this expert a key to our smart contract, and so he can uh, put his uh, assessment of this uh, damage on the blockchain, and then we have this objective data source, which is basically an expert, which is certified. And so we can, uh, this is not a concrete model which we are doing, but uh, just an idea how we can solve similar cases. Huh? By experts, basically, we, we have the same uh, way like in a, classical insurance companies does it by experts and by, by some uh, people which are responsible for claims management, but we can distribute it, we can decentralize it, and we can make it transparent and more fair. That's the difference in blockchain. Yeah, actually that question came because of your weather insurance, and this is kind of the area where actually it can be very... Of course, in weather insurance, everything depends on the granularity of the data. For example, in Germany, we have um, public accessible data is very rough. Yeah, and we have I think we have 80 weather stations distributed over all Germany, and of course uh, the, this is a very uh, loose grid. Yeah, and uh, you need to tighten this grid with more stations. And uh, so uh, either you have a very clever statistical model which interpolates between the stations, or you need to have more data. Yeah, so. You can't solve this, but we hope that people will solve this. So, like, if you're in a blockchain, yeah. your goal is to either disrupt an incumbent or make an incumbent more efficient, right? And let's say you make an incumbent more efficient. Insurers, insurers make money from like nickel and diamond people, making money off actuarial tables and investing float off of you know, policies. Yes. Um, I applaud you as a consumer that you're going to stop the nickel and diamond. Uh, actuary tables exist in any, any case. How are you going to enable them to, to, to invest the flow? In, uh, that's a, that's a uh, huge question, of course. If, uh, if we have this problem, we will be very happy yeah. that we can discuss how we invest our flow. Yeah. Uh, I know, for example, Warren Buffett is generating most of his profits Entire just in, uh, investing his float. So float, for, for all these people who don't understand insurance, a float is the amount of money which is never spent in an insurance company. It's always there, yeah? uh, because they, they collect it, they, they, they pay their claims, but there always is a, there is a huge amount of money which is just left on the table and is never used for paying claims. And this is the so-called float, and of course it makes insurance companies very stable, because in catastrophic events they can use this float to pay also larger claims, but basically most of the time it's laying around. And so they can generate profit by just investing this block because it's cheap money. Uh, so currently we don't have this cheap money. Uh, if we are in two years or in 
five years in a situation that we can discuss how we invest our flows and we are very happy. And I hope we have a blockchain project which helps us to invest these funds in a very decentralized way. Currently, we don't have also, a flow, but <laughs> maybe. <laughs> so, but for example, uh, all these projects like Milan Port, which are building uh, new types of uh, assessment management, assess asset management, these are all in the same way. And I hope in five years we have an opportunity to use them. Okay. So, uh, just some. Yes. Sorry, I forgot you. So, uh, I, I try to repeat the question. Uh, if we are building an insurance business which is based on Malta, then we can sell insurance policies in Europe because Malta is a part of the European Union and there you have so called passporting. So, if you have an insurance company in one country, they can basically sell policies in all other countries. That's a unique uh, feature of the European Union. And so, for Malta, we can sell policies in all Europe. We can sell in Singapore, we can sell in the US. Except the US person goes on our homepage and buys insurance policies. That's allowed. But I cannot op open an office in New York and sell my policies in the US and make marketing in the US. Uh, I have to rely on people just coming to our homepage by chance and buying policy. So, in the US, I would need a different type of Basically, I need a so-called fronting company. Fronting company is a company which uh, is specialized on offering uh, also license as a service for people who want to sell products from outside. And uh, so we have also some ideas how we could uh, do this, but uh, the, the, the bigger problem is finding an institutional partner, not the fronting company. The fronting companies are there, but the distribution partner is a uh, yeah, either we would need to build up a primary insurance in America, which is very difficult because we need to do it in every single state. Uh, there is no, uh, not so, such a thing like passporting like in the European Union. Uh, so I think Lemonade tried it and they are, I think they are in a handful of states uh, present by now. So it's very difficult and I know even big insurance companies like Allianz say they completely ignore the American market because of this problem. Yeah? And, uh, so uh, I think the only way to do it is by a fronting company which basically provides this as a service and yeah, then you can use this. But we don't put up an on insurance company in US. I mean, as you're from Munich, why wouldn't you just work with Munich Re, which has relationships in every state in the US and relationships We talked to them, but as I told the big incumbents, they are very reluctant, they, they have much time and they have very little incentive to help us. Yeah? So uh, that's a problem. They, if we know them, we are talking to them. Of course, uh, and uh, basically last year in, in summer we, we, we had a project with Munich Green, but uh, shortly before finalizing everything, they said uh, it's becoming difficult and uh, not not interesting enough for us. Yeah. So we are too small. Uh, Munich Green is very big. Is there a risk for a share file? No, the, uh, in, in our model, you see the protected cell companies, they all have separate risk pools. Of course, the, the core has a central risk pool, but it's only used in very extreme cases. Yeah? So basically, the, 
all of these cells have to prove that they are sustainable, they have a sustainable risk model, and uh, the uh, central risk pool is only used as a last resort in extreme cases. Yeah. So these risk pools are separate from each other. That's basically the name protected cell company because every cell is protected from each other. So if one cell goes bankrupt, the other cells are not affected. <coughs> Yes, that's basically the idea. Uh, that by, by using a public blockchain, we uh, make the financial situation of all the cells also very transparent. We don't do not know yet how much transparency is useful because transparency is not a value in its own. Uh, transparency is a value which is, has to be weighted against other values. For example. Uh, it's not very easy to understand the balance sheet of an insurance company. And uh, if we make a balance sheet uh, public uh, without any further information, then people could make wrong conclusions. And uh, because you need to interpret this in a correct way. And most balance sheets are incomplete because uh, they, uh, they, uh, that's why we need uh, auditors which complete all the information. And uh, so transparency itself is a difficult thing. We think that we can bring more transparency, but uh, if we uh, transparency in, 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 in put it in an extreme way, then you can also it can be a risk for a company because people make the wrong conclusions. And so we, we need to, to develop a model where we can uh, we can uh, adjust the amount of transparency which is needed for investors keeps them safe, but on the other side to protect the company uh, by uh, just uh, keeping the information in, which is not needed for investors in the closed so. so a lot of these are existing models, and that's a facetious question about it. In blockchain, it's a lot of emerging models. Could there be any like micro-insurance policies where like my friend is serially single and I can underwrite like, this relationship, like a breakup or something like that? Things in terms like don't have policies that we can find the policies. That's more than more like gambling. Yeah. Because uh, well, it's not uh, uh, we discussed this also. Yeah. Uh, and well, micro policies. That was, that was uh, some one learning from me. Yeah. Um, if you have any type of risk, yeah, basically we are talking about risk. And if you have any type of risk, then you can of course measure the risk by a probability of default. Yeah? So every risk has a certain probability of default. A car accident, or dying, or having um, some loss in, in flight delay, can measure it by, by probability. And um, I made the experience that probability above five percent is basically no longer insurable. You can bring you a central counterparty, but it's a platform. I can bet my friend he's not going to oh, be a uh, uh, yeah, That's like the no sense. Yeah. Of course, yeah. for example, yeah. you know, all the prediction markets yeah. are working like this. Yeah. You, can, you can have individual risk and you can bet on the risk. Yeah. But insurance means pooling similar risks, yeah. which are itself uh, very small. So, a true risk is always a risk which is below 5%. So, uh, for example, in, you, you see it very transparent in our flight today. We, we can insure flights which have a probability of maybe 10%, but you don't get anything. You, know, you, get, uh, you, you pay $15 premium and you get $20 uh, in, as, a, as, as a cover. Yeah? And so it makes no sense. So uh, it's, I think insurance makes sense if, it, if the probability is very low and if you have many similar risks which you can pull, then it makes an insurable risk. So going on that, let's say I create a model. How does the model validation process work? Model validations, right? Yeah, we have, uh, for, for example, for flight delay, we made a uh, Monte Carlo simulation. So we, we had a big data pool of historical flights, 
and we, we made a simulation with uh, millions of flights and we calculated uh, the, the outcome yeah? and we adjusted all the risk parameters until the net outcome per period of time was positive for us yeah? and we still had some very small margin and uh, so this was how we calculated. But basically it's very simple, the model is uh, if, if, if you have a flight with a probability of uh, 1%, then the payout is a factor of 99. Because one flight is delayed and the other flight uh, 99 are punctual, and so 99 pay to the payout for the, the one which is late. And then you have to take into account that sometimes flights are, uh, some, several flights are uh, delayed at once, for example, Ten people sitting in the same plane, and that adds a certain amount on the premium because you have to, to take care of this, but it's not much. And uh, it all works very fine if you have lots of policies. Because the amounts are small, probability is small, it works very well as soon as you have more than one of the policies. And the other question is how much experience do you guys want in data? So, like, what's the time uh, frame that you would want uh, to have this data over? We have, like for flight delay, we have uh, lots of data. We have uh, years. We have, I think the flights are available for the last 20 years, nearly without any. Uh, yeah, I get that for flights, but if I bring in a new product, uh, yeah, what's the minimum amount depends. of experience I need to bring? It depends. I think for, for example, for better data, you always also have lots of time series. Uh, for example, in Germany, you have it for at least 50 years. So it's not a problem. I think uh, for making a solid model, you need at least uh, two or three years. That's, that's enough to have a first estimate. And essentially, for most insurance products, uh, you know, for most new products, you don't have any history. For example, for the insurable crypto wallet, you don't have any history. You just make uh, an estimate. And reinsurance companies are very fine with this. They think, OK, it's a new product. We have, uh, in the last 20 years, we have uh, had uh, 50 new products and uh, 40 of them uh, went well and 20 uh, went not so well. And that's our history. Yeah? So, so they have a meta history of new products over time. And when they say, OK, uh, typically 20% uh, of new products fail. And we take this into account. And so that's also good. Yeah? So they have not history of the single product, but on the portfolio of all the new products of the last 20 years, and they have very good knowledge on this. So are you guys going to do in-force analysis then for products that fail? Like, so for instance, when you have, or how are you going to manage the in-force analysis? Of course, can the the history? History? you always try to, to build up your history, and as, as soon as claims come in, then they, every claim will improve your history and will improve your statistical models. Your statistical model is nothing statically, but it's living. Yeah? So every claim adds to the model. I mean, that's the modeling part. But like, for instance, for a reinsurance, like Munich Re, my wife yeah. is one of the main actuaries in the U.S. for a company. Uh, you have you renegotiate treaties in real time uh, through reinforced analysis, like what you're saying. A lot of them fail. So I mean, but a lot of it is trying to figure out what pieces to change and how you can. Uh, change legal structures of it to then raise rates or work with the policies. And if, if you're like for new policies like this, you're going to have to have a, some kind of in-force analysis team and legal team that works. Uh, of course, and, uh, 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 that's also also a continuous process. Yeah? And so the, the policy with the insurance company is nothing statically, but they have clauses which enable them to, to change the premium as soon as their knowledge grows and they adopt the premium to the which uh, is the policy based on the price? Is it based on, on the risk to you or the actual probability? So, if I'm the tenth buyer on the flight, and you have a push policy in America because you're going to operate here like in Malta, do I pay a higher price as the tenth insured flyer on the flight, or is yes. it based on the total? From flight delay, we calculate every single flight is different. Yeah. So, if you know, the passenger being the tenth buyer of the policy on the flight. Because it's not as liquid of a market or whatever in the US. Because I have to go buy it and go and buy it. It's not like a multi-way push. Ads and stuff. 
do I have a worse rate than the first person walking down the flight? Or is it based on the actual probability of the flight not uh, so the, the currently we don't uh, add um, uh, margin uh, for more people. Expected loss, yeah. Can you go to the one Yes. So, uh, my last slide. <coughs> this. Yeah, we are doing a token generating event. It's, uh, the date is not yet published, but I can say it's the end of June. Um, and uh, we will publish the exact date in the next days. We have a newsletter. You can just go on our registration page, uh, which is also new. We have a new homepage with much more information. Uh, if somebody has uh, looked on our homepage in the last weeks, you will see the difference. Thanks to our good team, Natalia sitting behind and working on this. And uh, yeah, big progress also on this side. The um, uh, token will be used uh, on the platform for payment and for fees for the participants, which are paid in tokens. So if you build an insurance product, you will be paid in BIP tokens in the future. And uh, the, the tokens will be sold by our foundation. The foundation uh, will keep uh, a lot of tokens for the future. If you need additional rounds in the next years, and there may be additional token uh, events uh, when the foundation will sell these tokens. But currently, uh, we think the next uh, three years we won't sell any tokens, but it's only token generating event. And um, you need to register on our page, you need to do KYC. Uh, it's very cumbersome. I give you a warning because uh, we need to comply with German and Swiss KYC regulations, which are the hardest in the world. And uh, so uh, the simple document based uh, identification, like you are used in this card base, we just send them your passport copy, that is not enough. Uh, we have a video identification, we have a dialogue with an agent, and then you need to check the security features of your passport. Uh, but um, normally it's done in five minutes. So, uh, if you don't uh, uh, do this, if you have the second alternative is uh, our partner, Bitty, in Switzerland. Bitty is a Bitcoin exchange, and they can also do KYC for us, so we can problems you can also use them. And um, you can also get, of course, a bonus if you accept to lock your uh, tokens for one year, then you can get a bonus up to 25%. This is all described on our registration page, and uh, we are, of course, very happy if you join our team of contributors and if you want to with high, higher amounts, and you can also sign an early contributor agreement. And you can also uh, contribute to larger amounts of visa. So, the, the funds is mostly used for, of course, developing the platform and for funding the first core structure which will enable this uh, legal and regulatory framework. So, this is it basically to answers. Of course, we will also reserve some money for future development. It's not all spent in one day. But if you ask, uh, where do the guys need uh, 30 million dollars? Uh, we will. Uh, we have a certain fixed amount for development cost, which is about seven to eight million dollars, which is used for the whole technical development. And all the rest will go in the. Uh, funding of these uh, insurance companies and cost structures. And uh, there is a simple rule. The more money you put into it, the faster you can go. And so uh, if we have, for example, if we raise $10 million, we can start, but uh, it will, won't go so fast. You can maybe only add one product, uh, product per quarter or whatever. If you have $30 million, then we can go at a much faster step, we can uh, build up more distribution channels. So the more money you can get, the faster we go. This is a simple uh, answer. That's, but uh, most of the funds won't be spent. It's kept in a risk pool. 
So uh, it will be visible and uh, if it's not spent, and even if uh, we encounter problems, then this amount of money is still on the same place. Okay, thank you very much for listening. Are there any more questions? And that would be the time to ask. Uh, <clears throat> I have two questions. Um, the first is about the ILS side and the reinsurance loopholes. Um, so right now, these sort of ILS securities that exist, like the cap bonds and the ILWs, yep. are traded yep. on secondary markets. Uh, is your vision sort of to also enable trading and uh, tokenized versions of these reinsurance yep. ILS products? Exactly. So this is what we are trying to do. Uh, this is not the first step after the TGE, but maybe this is done in one year, two years, because this is a whole new, new story, also on the regulatory side. These tokens are securities. So all of the securities laws apply, and the whole process, prospects, and whatever type of stuff, the legal framework is much more complicated than a simple token generating event which is still very complicated in our case. So uh, risk pools are on our roadmap, but not on the first point, but maybe after we have launched the two or three successful products and we can securitize those risk pools. Yeah, and so my second question is uh, in regards to the database and the data layer. Um, insurance and reinsurance products, uh, you have excess of loss, but also for risk and quota share type products that require a lot of data uh, to be passed around to the different participants. Uh, can you talk a little bit about the database uh, solution that you have and how it's essential? Yes, uh, I repeat it with my words. Um, how can we decentralize uh, data sources? So make uh, basically, for example, flight delay is based on uh, one provider, flight starts. Yeah, you can read it on our homepage. It's flight starts is one of the big providers, and if flight starts uh, delivers the wrong data, you won't see it. So there is a certain so attack vector. If flight starts would be manipulated, then this would affect our model. And uh, it would, would be better if we would have a centralized data source for flight data. And uh, this is doable, but it's. Uh, it's adds more complexity, of course. Uh, one way to do it would be to um, collect all the public accessible uh, telemetry data which most planes are obliged to send. And you can um, receive them with a very small Raspberry uh, $5 computer and an antenna, and so you put it on your roof, and then you can collect all the data automatically and transmit it to a decentralized database. And uh, provided we have the money and the effort and people do it, we could build up a decentralized database uh, which would be uh, not manipulable. Because, uh, of course, we need thousands of such people. Uh, basically, they are, they are already present because uh, Flight Aware is working with such a network centralized uh, receivers and uh, so it's doable to build up a centralized database of flight data but it's complicated and the uh, main question is data quality because this data is raw data and it needs to be enhanced it needs, it needs to be filtered and the filtering and enhancement of this data is a very difficult and complex process and we currently don't have the resources to do this filtering we would like to have it, but apparently it's not good. Still on question on the data. So, other than what we say, it's not And how do you manage it? Okay, basically, we can use any type of data which is uh, risk correlated, like weather data, flight data, health data. Uh, even uh, data on people who have died. Most countries have registers of people who have died, and uh, so we could use this data for life insurance, for health insurance. Uh, you can think of any type of data. I'm talking about like the team wants to build a product. 
We only use public data, so we don't have any own data, we only use public accessible data. So, of course, all data which we use can be reused, and we uh, have to provide you access to this. Uh, and we have, for example, for crop insurance, we have a, a small open community which discuss uh, possible data sources and just join such a community that you will learn about the way how they collect the data and uh, which data sources are. I see that frequently. I think most small insurers, that's their yeah. value. Yeah. Okay. okay, thank you very much. Any other yeah. questions? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, can you take another prior question on my token model? Yeah. Uh, I'm just curious to understand what the rationale behind why we talked about 30% of the tokens. Uh, so how do you derive this number of and you understand that you can you to start your software programming and all that for the Yes, I'm So what I'm trying to get to is that is there any method of awareness you have to understand a lot of companies place a lot of money at billion dollars and five million dollars. So how do you guys come and cost hundred million? Say that they can sustain your operations in the long run. Yeah. The same thing say if you can just share some thoughts on it. Yeah. First of all, uh, we need to explain the, uh, the hundred millions that you can extrapolate from token price to the um, maximum supply. Um, this is a maximum supply. That's what the supply is supply. And all the tokens which are not sold are kept by the foundation. And the foundation is obliged to. Uh, watch the price of the token. So the, uh, the foundation cannot sell all these tokens because it would crash the market. And uh, so the foundation is prohibited to do this on a legal basis. Not on a technical basis, they can sell it, but on a legal basis they are prohibited. So we are uh, saying that, um, for example, if we sell tokens for 10 million, then our circulating supply is 10 million. And uh, maybe some other speakers we will airdrop to really support us. So in, in some we will maybe have uh, 15 million circulating supplies. So that is the market capitalization of Isabel at the moment. And uh, of course, this is still a huge sum. Um, and uh, I already, already explained uh, the use of the funds, uh, which is mostly for capitalization. And um, yeah, that's a, it's a very difficult question if you can justify uh, the value of the, 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 the token because uh, until the token has enough utility to circulate and get enough teams and enough usage of the token, this will take time. So uh, you, if you want to sell your token three days after TGE, uh, based on the utility value, that will be uh, But uh, so we recommend to keep the token. We offer a bonus for blocking the token for one year, to take a fair amount of time, and it will uh, help the token to keep its value and to develop and use. And uh, so, of course, uh, this is a utility token, it all depends on token being used. We have two, two uses. First is the payment uh, character of the token, and the second is the staking. Taking uh, people, for example, if you want to use our license framework, then you need to put in a lot of tokens. So we expect that uh, if all goes right, then uh, a large amount of tokens will be locked as a collateral for using the license. And that's basically an answer of how we increase uh, the value of the token. So usage of the token as a fee and payment, and the second is taking. Yeah, that will provide token. Another thing I just thought of, are you worried about US regulators like the CFTC? You know, they're announcing this as any cryptocurrency that uh, has an ICO, so if you monitor, is regulated, regulated yes. by the CFTC. Yes. That's a security. Uh, so, I mean, you're, you're putting yourself directly in the chairman's guidelines to attack you, basically. But yeah, they are make any precautions that uh, nothing can happen after the US. So, we only can only admit uh, with uh, credit investors. 
So accredited investors uh, can buy our tokens or others are prohibited. I'm sorry. So um, if you're not an accredited investor and you're a US person, then you won't be able to participate in our token sale. And you need to wait one year. In one year, the tokens will be freely traded. And uh, then you, it's up to you if you are allowed to buy them or not. Uh, we, we can, I'm not a lawyer and I can can I give you legal advice, but as far as I know, uh, in one year the uh, limitations are uh, a bit loosened and uh, the token can be traded. It's your contract that's it. So, like just uh, buying an insurance contract is based on CFTC rulings recently. So, it has been challenged in court, so you don't know what's going to end up happening. Uh, but current regulatory belief is that if you sold to a US person an uh, insurance contract in Ethereum, it's uh, a security. And it's regulated by the CFTC, and they can. Uh, you don't so sell just it. just having letting them buy on the internet is technically against the rules until challenging courts. But we, we, uh, unfortunately, we need to spend much of our money to lawyers because of these problems, and we try to keep on the same side. Uh, and uh, on the same side, uh, you need to take some legal risks, uh, and otherwise you can stop living. Uh, Last question. Uh, what is the process if somebody has a team or has an idea and wants to present a team to you? Is that specified? Write us an email. Time? And write us an email. Uh, enter our Telegram chat uh, and uh, we will contact you and uh, try to make it happen. So, a way to do that on your website? Yeah, we have, uh, we have a. Basically, we have a button on the homepage where you can uh, deliver your product idea, and basically, it's all landing in our inbox, and then we scan you with ideas and we will come back to you. And, uh, so is there a framework for what you need in a proposal? Yeah. Yes, uh, I think that what I've shown today will be available in a more technical way. So, for example, we will in, uh, in uh, hopefully, in one or two months, you will be able to download the platform. You can run it on your laptop in a testing environment. You can just build your own product. Just test it, and we will give you instructions how to use it. You can plug in the Oracle, and we will show you some samples of how it's working. And so, so you can build it on your own. And if it's working, just come to us, and we will talk about nice so, okay. and yeah, of course, we will, in the end, if you, if you want to use our license, you need to provide and prove that your statistical model is sound. So we cannot uh, just take any statistical model, but we need a statistical model which has uh, sound as proof. We will provide help for this. For example, we have actuaries which can check uh, such models and can uh, certify such models. And this is also needed for regulatory reasons that we cannot uh, implement any uh, arbitrary model. But we need to Well, thank you very much for <laughs> It's great to be here, and I hope that I can bring you more news next year. Thank you very much for being here. I'm <laughs> <laughs>